Your wash, your mash, whatever you want to call it, the thing that you're trying to distill right now has uh, been sitting there for a little bit too long. Perhaps it's smelling a little odd or looking a bit funky and you're worried whether or not it's really safe to distill. That's what we're talking about today. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is still at the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Safety versus not throwing something away. You've put time, blood, sweat, tears, love into making something that you really wanted to still and now you're on the fence as to whether or not, you know, whether the, the best thing to do is just to put it down the toilet, basically. I get it, I understand that. And I, I honestly, I think every fermented hobby these forums are full of new, you know, enthusiasts, new chasers asking these questions because it is a completely legitimate question. I get it. I really, really do. So I thought we'd make a video about it uh, to see if we can help some people out. Let's get stuck into this thing, all right? So here's the deal. Before we do get stuck into this, I need to do a little bit of a disclaimer just saying that this is an insanely complicated topic. If you really want to get into it, don't worry, it's really not. But what I'm saying is there's, there's so many factors to this that I can't possibly claim to know everything about it. It's not my specialty, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what I think, but because it's a safety thing, I'm just warning you guys, this is my take on it and my suggestion to you. I'm washing my hands of responsibility is what I'm doing here. Because apparently you need to do that these days when uh, common sense should prevail, but Jesus. Anyway, let's move on. In 99.99%, okay, that might be a slight exaggeration. Let's go with 99% of these cases. The answer is going to be, it is completely fine. You're good to run it. Uh, go ahead, and you know what? You might actually get a sweet little surprise that it might be even better uh, than it would have been otherwise. <coughs> but I know that when you're worried about safety, uh, you know, there's, there's people out there, I'm one of them, that just tends to worry that you fit into that 1% rather than the 99% and you just want to make sure you're doing the right thing. So, what is it that people are worried about? Uh, number one, the wash, the mash, the, the whatever it is, the fermented product that you wanted to still has sat there for a really long time. You know, oh, it sat there for three weeks after it finished fermenting. It sat there for six months after it finished fermenting, so on and so forth. Um, you know, and people are worried that it's going to go bad before they get to put it in the still. So let's cover that one first. Uh, here's the thing, guys. If you have decent, and, and I just mean like decent, not even great, like nothing like the beer guys, hygiene and sanitary and cleaning process it's going to be absolutely fine. You can let it sit there for as long as you want. It might oxidize a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, and it might taste a little different. If you didn't clean that well and you didn't sanitize and all that sort of stuff, chances are it's probably still fine. It's just that um, after the initial fermentation of yeast, there may have been some wild bacteria, wild yeast, wild fungi, whatever it happens to be in there that has chewed through slightly more of the products, you know, than, than what the standard Saccharomyces left yeast left behind. Uh, once again, this is almost certainly not an issue. We're going to get onto that stuff again a little bit further on. But what I'm saying here is the fact that your wash, your mash, whatever it happens to be, has sat for a certain amount of time, in and of itself, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There really isn't. Uh, the next thing that people worry about is their wash, their mash, their alcohol turning to vinegar. And this one is, uh, this one's interesting to me guys. So basically the, the premise is that fruit flies carry mother of vinegar and if they get into something, they can, you know, basically inoculate your batch with that. And what that does essentially is to, to make vinegar, you need to make alcohol first. And then the mother of vinegar works on the alcohol and turns it into vinegar, funnily enough. Uh, yes, this 100% can happen. That's how you get vinegar. And we don't want vinegar going through our stills. If we do have vinegar in the product, you're not going to really be able to separate it out. The whole thing's probably just going to taste nasty. It's not going to be a good time. Uh, but here's the thing, team. It takes a really, really long time for that to happen. Have a look at, you know, how you literally make vinegar. It, it's not a quick 
process. I have literally had fermenters. <laughs> I've taken the top off and I can count, you know, if I wanted to, a hundred flies, hundred little fruit flies stuck in the wash and it sat there for another two weeks and it's been completely and utterly fine. So yes, it is a real thing. Yes, it can happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, the answer is if you're unsure, run it because vinegar is not going to hurt you. <laughs> vinegar is fine. It's completely safe. It's just that it might taste a little bit off. So in my mind, I'd much rather, you know, put it through the still and uh, have peace of mind that I'm not going to throw something delicious away. And if it does turn out to be a vinegary mess, then, well, you just cleaned your still a little bit and you didn't really lose anything except for the time that it took you to, to run the still, right? All right, so now we start getting into the stuff that um, is actually a little bit scary. And, and what I mean by that is not, it's not actually scary for us. It's pretty freaking safe for us. But the, the stuff that people worry about actually hurting them. You know, I don't think anyone's worried that vinegar is going to, <laughs> to mess them up, for example. So people worry that pathogens or that something toxic can grow in the product we're making and end up, you know, making themselves or their loved ones or, or whatever it happens to be sick. And I get that concern. You're a good person for worrying about that sort of stuff. Here's the thing. Fermentation in and of itself has literally been used to preserve products, you know, through the history of humankind. It is a gift, a marvel, a amazing part of nature that lets us survive in certain situations where we probably wouldn't be able to. Fermentation has literally been used to take a time of plenty when you harvest whatever it is, <laughs> you know, fruit, grain, freaking vegetables, whatever. When you, when you have a time of plenty and you've got a buttload of stuff, but you know what? Uh, we don't have electricity or fridges or freezers and all that kind of stuff. We can't just hang on to it for any length of time whatsoever. Fermentation got humans through that time of what would have been starvation. And it just kind of works for the most part it just it, it it just naturally wants to happen so right from the get-go you've already got the the deck stacked overwhelmingly overwhelmingly in your favor for this to turn out to be something safe when drinking water like just straight pure water was literally deadly it was a it was like playing russian roulette drinking water <laughs> for a long time in our history beer wine low abv fermented products were literally what you know people would drink while they're working in the fields um, so they can stay hydrated they can live and keep working and not get extremely sick so why is the deck stacked in our favor well first of all we have a bunch of these little guys that are our best friends as distillers yeast bacteria that when they go to work on a product, uh, they create stuff that is not toxic for us. Well, I mean, alcohol is toxic. You, you get the idea. Uh, but they also create, but they also create an environment that inhibits the growth of stuff that can be scary for us. The first thing that I would ask people if they're worried about a wash is, did it ferment? Did you pitch yeast? And after you pitched the yeast, did that take off? Did you see signs of fermentation? Did it bubble? Did it churn over a little bit? Did the gravity drop? And, and when I say that, don't stress about the lag period. Did it start fermenting within, you know, three, maybe four days of when you pitched the yeast? And did the gravity drop? Did it actually do something to the products that you're making? If the answer to that is yes, then you're already well on your way to being completely and utterly fine. And I know, I know, I know people worry about botulism. To be honest, botulism is the one thing that is, in my mind, like, because we're not using hops, which help subdue it even more, uh, it, is, <laughs> it is something to think about, put it that way. So because of botulism, if you have a situation where you're a little bit suspect about what's going on, uh, the second question I would ask is, did the pH drop? And there's an easy way to test it. You can test that with pH strips, with a pH meter. Uh, honestly, I've done it a couple of times where I just taste it and then spit straight away. Yeah, maybe not the best idea, but uh, if the pH has dropped, botulism can't grow. Once the, 
Once the pH gets down below 4.6, botulism is incapable of doing its thing. That doesn't mean that it will uh, kill any toxin that's already been created before that point, but it can't create any more. But what does kill the toxin that's already there is uh, 85 degrees Celsius or whatever the hell that is in weird freedom units for five minutes. So, you know, I, I know those temperatures are pretty borderline, but I'm, I'm fine with that when it goes through the still. Moving on from botulism, third, uh, what's, what does it look like? What does it smell like? What, what are you getting from it? Yes, it might smell like baby puke. It might smell acidic. It might smell, it might smell even sulfury or kind of like rotten eggs. All of those smells I'm completely cool with. Uh, they're gonna be absolutely fine going through the still. Uh, what I would be concerned about is if it smells more like rotting flesh. If it's heading down that road, I might be a, I might second guess myself uh, and then I would look at what is forming on top of the product. If it did smell a little like rotting flesh, I would be slightly more cautious about it and then I would start looking at what the product you know, looks like especially the surface, what's happening on the top. Uh, there are all sorts of freaky things that can happen up here, guys. Don't let it put you off. Uh, I'll put some photos up over here. These are all pellicles um, and they are no problem whatsoever. You can get all sorts of funky stuff happening on the top of the product. The only things that I would see that would make me just chuck it out and, and probably not use it is uh, actual fluffy, um, structured mold growing up off the surface. Now, don't get this confused with bubbles uh, and with kind of flowery, powdery stuff sitting on kind of a slick, almost oily looking surface. That's completely fine. But if you're seeing big, you know, like pillars of, of mold, especially if it's black growing up, I'd be, I'd be a little bit sketchy about that. And you know what, I'd probably just ditch it. So the long and short of it guys is letting it sit for a long time doesn't matter whatsoever. Uh, yes, it can potentially turn to vinegar if it sits there for a long ass time in the right conditions with mother of vinegar in it, but it isn't gonna hurt you. Run it and you know, if, you, if you're not sure and it might be vinegary, it might not be, run it and find out. Uh, third, botulism. Yes, botulism is scary. Yes, it will freaking kill you. The chances of you getting botulism poisoning through what we're doing, slim to none, make sure it actually fermented to start with uh, and make sure that the pH dropped if you're worried about botulism and you're golden, it's not gonna be a problem. And we're putting it through the still. We're gonna boil the bollocks out of it for an extended period of time. It's gonna be fine. Uh, third, check what it looks like on top. Check what it smells like. If you get some warning signs there, you know, feel free to reach out on the Chases of the Craft Facebook page in the comments on this video, you know, reach out to someone if you want to, but chances are you're gonna be absolutely fine. And, 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 before I give you uh, the reason that this can actually be better <laughs> than your standard recipes, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, guys. I don't get to do this stuff without you. Uh, and I am, as soon as I finish this, I'm about to go over to the little mini pot still and make some fortified Fijoa wine. I'm hoping that that video will come out tomorrow. So patrons, that's, uh, that's all thank you to you. Thank you so very much. All right, so I mentioned that I wanted to tell you the reason that this might actually be better. Uh, here's the thing guys, wild wacky ferments that do weird things can create all sorts of interesting flavors in a product, but uh, I think what's more interesting is the precursors they make, mostly the acids. So a lot of these wild yeasts and bacterias and things will make different kinds of acids. Though, you know, that, that, that's what they produce instead of alcohol. And when those acids go through the still, they go through a process of esterification uh, and they can create all sorts of different delicious flavors that end up being, funnily enough, uh, on the fruity, um, sweet, tropical side of things more often than not. So that's pretty freaking cool. All right, so if this video helps out one or two new distillers, job done, I'm happy. If it does help you out, make sure you give it a thumbs up, guys. That'd be awesome. Uh, if you like the video and you wanna see more like it, hit the subscribe button down below so you get notifications, ring the bell as well, obviously. And I will catch you next time. I'm uh, hoping I can get that fortified Fijoa wine out tomorrow. See ya.